Last time on Left Behind. Chloe, it's Buck. Have you seen the sunrise? No, you were being... Look outside, honey. It's like someone hit the dimmer. We're having power problems here already. Save enough power to watch him. You'll be glad you did. I want to know what Dr. John Ben Judas says. Don't you? As you can see, I am at the wailing wall uh, a few feet from the witnesses. Hang on. I think I have some. You hear that? Based on Apollyon, the fifth book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 58 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Hun, I'm going to try to finally make that run to Pawaukee today. We can use Ken's Suburban, some other stuff of his. Just pray for wisdom. I will, Dad. <clears throat> Just be careful of all that smoke. I will. David, I just had the strangest thing happen to me. Right now, I don't know what kind of spin the GC will put on this, but I'll bet my life it'll never make the news. Everybody heard it. It won't have to make the news. Everybody in the control room saw it before we heard it. You saw the angel? Exactly. And the sound. The huge radio receivers picked it up as plain as day. Listen, I asked a Turkish guy what language it was in, and he said his own, and I heard it in English. You saw the angel? I'm telling you, Captain, it, it freaked everybody. I mean, everybody. Guys were on the floor crying. They've been playing the tape over and over in there, and I even copied it on my dictation machine. But you know what? It plays back only in Greek. Even though everybody heard it in their own language, it was in Greek. Cameron, did you hear that? Yeah, I thought it was the TV at first. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Haim, Haim, it's okay, it's okay. I know what it was. It must mean something terrible is coming. I'll explain it. What have we done to deserve this, Cameron? And, and what could be more terrible than, than what we're already going through? Hey, Captain Steele. Good to see you again. Ernie? Man, that was scary, wasn't it? Not if you knew it was coming. Right, but still, that voice, that freaked me out. Oh. How's Ken's car doing? Pretty good shape for all it's been through, I'd say. So, you find this therapeutic? What do you mean? I mean, does it help you remember Ken, you know, without being too painful? Oh, well, I didn't really know him that long. I mean, I was shocked and everything, but mostly, I worked, he paid well, I just thought, with both of you being believers... Well, you know. yeah, that was cool. He hooked me up with that Ben Judah guy's website. See, si, I'll, I'll catch up with you in a second. Yeah, I'll be at the tower. Hey, Bo, you hear that voice out of the sky? Yeah, I heard it. If you believe that voice was from the sky, though, you're loopier than I thought. Well, then what was it? Crazy fundamentalist playing with our minds again? Some kind of loudspeaker trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I help you with something? No, thanks. Just a friend of Ken Ritz. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. It's awful. Actually, I just came by to see about his belongings. We haven't found any living relatives. So you thought you'd come no, by and right. see what you... No, that's right. No could... relatives. <clears throat> Go ahead. 
You thought you'd come by and see what you could make off with, is that it? No, that's not it at all. Where I do simply you get came off by... waltzing in here and setting up shop? Look, I'm a close friend of the deceased. So? So what am I talking to, an alien? How does anyone who wants to be polite talk to strangers on your planet? Bo. Hey, why don't you get your tail out of here while it's still part of your body? Why don't you mind your own business while I talk with Ernie? Because Ernie's on my payroll and everything on this property is my business, including Ritz's effects. Then I'll be happy to talk to Ernie on his own time and... And on his own property. If that's what I need to do. But what gives you the right to Ken Ritz's stuff? What gives you any right to it? Now, I haven't claimed any right to it. But I think its disposition is a valid question. Um, Bo, sir, Ken told me that if anything ever happened to him, that I could have his stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he did. The planes, this car, his personal junk, whatever I wanted. You just said you hardly knew him. Ernie, that's bull and you know it. Now shut up, I'll handle this. Ritz was part owner of this airport. That's not what I heard. I knew he wanted to buy the place, but... Well, he, he made an offer anyway, or he was going to. Actually, yeah, an offer was made. Uh, so if there are assets in his estate, they'd be property of the Palwaukee ownership. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. He dies before your deal's closed, so you take his estate in exchange for what? You're going to change the name of the place to Ritz Memorial? So what's your stake in this smart guy? Look, I told you I am not making a claim. But Ken was a close friend, and I won't let anything happen to his belongings he didn't intend to happen. He intended for me to have it. Ernie, stick to your grease monkey and keep your nose out of this, will ya? And wipe that stupid smudge off your forehead. You look like some sort of urchin rug rat or something. Yeah? Well, I'm taking the stuff you said I could have, and there ain't nothing you can do to stop me. Oh, really? No, wait a minute now. You can see the smudge on Ernie's forehead? Yeah? So what? Doctor, I gotta be honest. It baffles me how you can experience all we've endured these last few years and still turn away from God. You told an international audience that Ben Judah was correct in his interpretations of what was happening. Forgive me if I'm out of line, but have you listened to yourself lately? I confess I, I cannot deny he is at work today. It is too plain. But I have to say, I don't understand your God. He seems mean-spirited. Why can he not get people's attention through uh, wonderful miracles, as he did in the Bible? Oh, wonderful miracles? Doctor, I am no scholar, but even I see the parallel between recent events and the plagues in Egypt. That is an interesting thought, Cameron. And again, I'm way out of my league here, but couldn't you say those plagues were designed to get someone's attention? Well, I, I suppose you're going to tell me that the, the locusts are on their way. Uh, uh, camera? What is it? Shh, camera? Shh, listen. What is it? Doctor, unless I've missed my guess, the locusts are on their way. What? Look. Look, the smoke appears to be getting thicker. You can't see ten feet. But, but the noise. Doctor. I'm not going to harp on this because I'm not the one trying to get your attention. The first of the three woes the angel warned of is going to be quite a ride, and God would really love to have you settled with him once and for all. What is that noise? It sounds like chains clanging together. Could it be a low-flying aircraft? No, not in that sky. It's getting louder and it's darker. It's, it's dark as night. Open that tape all the way, Cameron, please. Okay, okay. here you go. Oh, my. Oh, my heavens. What? There. Uh, coming out of the smoke. What, what are those creatures? They're well, they're, they're trying to get in. Come on, they're after me. Tell me I'm dreaming. Tell me it's only a nightmare. I'm sorry. Doctor, it is no what dream. What do they want? What will they do? Dr. Ben Judah teaches they won't harm the foliage like locusts usually do, but go after those who don't have the seal of God on their foreheads. Oh, they're going to break the glass. Sit down. Sit down. Let me see if I can... No, don't open the window. Keep them out. I can tell you. They, they mean to devour no, no, no. me. I'm not going to open the screen. Just the window outside. Maybe I can trap one or two between the screen and the window. And I don't want look. to see them. I don't want... I, I want to kill them before they kill me. I am, they won't kill you. God won't How let them. How do you them. know this, camera? Well, the Bible says the victims they attack will want to die and be unable. Oh, no, no, no. Well, uh, aren't you curious? Uh, they're fascinating hybrids. As a scientist, don't you want to see the... Oh, God! Don't, don't let Jonas die! Uh, Jonas. He's covered with the locusts. 
We gotta get him inside. I can't go out there with that lid. Okay, okay, okay. I'll have to go. Do you have a stick or some kind of weapon or I, anything? I have a tennis racket. Oh, okay, okay, that'll do. I'm going to lock myself in this room. Be sure you've killed them or kept out all of them before coming back in and put Jonas in the front guest room. Will he die? Well, he'll wish he could. Jonas, Jonas, now let me help you inside. Come on. Oh, get off, Chip! Ah. Ah, come on, Jonas. Come on. Oh, great. Conscious. Okay. All right, come on, I'll have to carry him. Oh. Come on, get away from him! Ah. Come on, Jonas. Ah. 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 Would you die? Oh, come on! Ah. Here. Here you go. Outside where you belong. Oh. Oh. Oh, I have to board up the front window. Here, I'll move this in front of it. In the meantime, uh, uh, you stay here in the guest room. I'm gonna check on Haim. Doctor, doctor, you okay? Are you sure there are none in the house? Yeah, I got him out. Double check. Uh, Haim, let me in. What in the world? I found it. A beekeeper's outfit? And a cricket bat. Uh, okay, I guess. Ivaron, <laughs> tell me about Jonas. Uh, well, he's not dead. He was unconscious when I found him. He's already swollen pretty bad, though. Are we even safe inside, Cameron? Well, looking at how aggressive these things are, it's kind of hard to say. Well, Ernie, if Bo here can see your mark, I guess we pretty much know you to be an imposter. What are you talking about? I know what he's talking about. Let me go. Oh, look, it's rubbing off. Hey, man, get your hands off me. Hey, pal, what's your problem? Leave him alone. I gotta hand it to you, Ernie. You did a pretty good job at producing a copy of something you've never seen. I'm telling you, it's real. Really? What the heck is that? What? Th th that cloud. That? Well, if I'm right, in about five minutes, you're gonna wish that mark was real. Why? What is it? I hate to tell you this, gentlemen, but you are in big trouble. What are you talking about, man? That is either one of your last warnings, or another trick by the fundamentalists. You decide. What do you know? That That's just the weather. It don't look like weather to me. Shut up, man! It's getting louder. I think it's time we get to the tower, man. Guys, you seem awfully concerned about this. Look, you can stand out in the rain if you want. The rain? Hey, hey Bo! They're letters, ah, man. Hey! What, what, what are these things? What are they? Hey, get them off me! Get them off me! Get them off me! Guess they don't bother believers. Guess not. You better drag these guys inside. Give me a hand. T.M. Delante. I go by T. Rayford Steer. I know who you are, Captain. Ken told me all about you. Uh, I'm sorry to sound rude, but he didn't mention you. Well, I asked him not to. Nice to know he was a man of his word. Any place we can put these guys? A reception area. Back here. I understand they're not going to die, but they're going to wish they could, That's huh? That's what I hear. You study? I'm in Sion's cyber class, like pretty much every other believer in the world. Oh, which reminds me. I... Let me check on Joan and the others. I'll get a place for him to lie down. Good. Daddy? Chloe, are you okay? Get us a mess. Teddy's already been attacked. Can Doc help? I'm trying, but she's running around screaming that she wants to die. She looks like she's going to be hurting like this for like five months. By then, we're going to want to kill her ourselves. Well, maybe, maybe she'll become a believer before that. Yeah, but Joan doesn't think I guarantee this thoroughly. Is, is everybody else all right? I think so. I'm waiting to hear from Buck. Okay. These things have got to be the ugliest critters I've ever seen. Good heavens, look at them. Yeah, Doc says they're demons, taking the form of organisms. This I have no problem believing. Haim, do you have a magnifying glass? You want a closer look? What is wrong with you? Well, they kind of look like horses, but their heads are different. I have a magnifier in my office. All right, you stay there, I'll get it. Yes, you will, my friend, because I am not leaving this room. Ah! God! Get off of me! 
Higher! Higher! Oh, what's wrong? Ah, my wrist! Between what, what, my what, what? club and sleeve! Oh, get it off! Oh. Get it off oh. of me! Please, oh, come on! I'm dying! Oh, man! Oh, it's stuck! It's stuck like, like suction! Here, put your hand down on the floor. Oh, hold still! Hold still! I'm gonna put my foot on oh, your wrist, okay? I don't care! Oh. Just get it off okay. of me! Uh. Uh. Kill it! Uh, here, I'll try. Oh, is it uh. dead? Tell me it's dead! Uh, actually, I don't know that we can kill them. But I've stunned a couple other ones, and this one's immobile right now. Oh, smash it! Stomp on it! Smack it with the bat! I'll try. It's not going anywhere. Oh! For the moment. Oh! 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 Wow, this is... This is really nasty looking under the magnifying glass. I can actually see the venom oozing out of its stinger. Oh! Oh! The head. Oh! It's got the... It's got the face of a man. Oh! But with big teeth and... And long hair. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! No, you don't... No, you know. Hi. Hi. Give me that face. Oh, here, here, here you are. Yeah, yeah, give me, give me. Uh, uh, gotcha, you little demon. Come on. Uh, Come on, I'm feeling faint. Uh, I must get to bed. And water. Uh, I need. I need water. What? Uh, uh, I, do you hear that? I hear, but I don't want to burn it, drown it, do something to it. First, help me to bed. Get me some water. Damn, these things speak. And I think it's English. No, Hebrew. It's calling out for Abaddon. Of course. Doc oh. told us about that. The king over these creatures is the chief demon of the pit. In Greek, his name is Apollyon. Why do I care to know the name of the monster that killed me? Cameron, I, I can't raise my arm to open the door. Here, I'll help you. Oh, oh. Whoa. No! Whoa, hang on. No, no, no. Here, here, lie down on the bed. No, no. Oh, your, your hands and neck. Oh, oh. oh your face too, they're oh. swelling. Good. Could you get me some some water? Please, yeah, yeah, please. It may not help, but, but I'll get it anyway. I can't stand that sound. I I can't stand the pain. Here, here you go. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you, camera. I am stop. What? Don't drink the water. It's turned to blood. No. Guess there's nothing we can do for him here, huh? Keep him inside, I suppose. Well, in the long run, it's their own fault. What's your story, anyway? Ernie had me convinced he was a believer. Had the mark and everything. Well, looking back, it makes sense. For days, he sounded as if he was interested. He said Kim was trying to get him to log on to Ben Judah's website. He was asking all these questions, especially about the mark. Guess he pulled it all together and was able to fake it. Well, I never thought about someone trying to counterfeit the mark. What do we do now? Try the smudge test on everybody? Nope. Don't have to. Why is that? Well, you're not testing my mark. But you know I'm legit, right? <laughs> because you weren't attacked. Bingo. And for the next ten months, that's our ticket. Huh, where are you getting ten months? I take it you haven't read Dr. Ben Judah today? No. Well, he says the locusts have five months to find the prey and sting them. And that the victims suffer for five months. He also believes, though he admitted it was just conjecture... That the locusts only need to bite a person once, and then they move on. Hmm. I'm glad they're on our side. Kinda. Ben Judah says they're demons. Yeah, but moonlighting for God at the moment. Hang on a second. Do you hear that? What? Are, are they chanting? I think so. Let me just crack the door. Get the heck out of here! Get the heck out of Distant little devils, ain't they? Yeah, and they are chanting something. Oh, why, why would God do this to me? What, what did I ever do to Him? You know me, Cameron. I'm not a bad man. I am 
This is more about what you did to yourself. What did I do? That that was so wrong. What what was my sin? Well, perhaps pride for one. Pride? I I am proud. Uh, maybe not intentionally, but you've ignored everything Sion told you about how to connect with God. You've been banking on your charm and maybe your status to carry you through. Dr. Ben Judah has shown you right out of scripture how it doesn't work that way. What? What? What scripture, Cameron? Well, let's see. In Ephesians, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Cameron, this... Oh, this... This is very, very painful. I wish I could tell you it's going to get better. The Bible says you'll want to die, but you won't even be able to commit suicide. It says that in in those parts. I'm afraid so. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. Oh, oh! Would God accept me if I relented only to ease my uh, my my torture? If you knew you'd still suffer regardless of your decision, would you still want her? I I don't know. I I, I don't know. God forgive me. Uh, I I don't know. Well, I don't remember everything I've heard, but here, here, I found this pirate radio station. Please, please, come on. They broadcast the witnesses from the whaling wall. withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. I made it rain on one city. I withheld rain from another city. Yet you have not returned to me. I blasted you with blight and mildew. When your gardens increased, the locusts devoured them. Yet you have not returned to me. I sent among you a plague after the manner of Egypt. Your young men I killed with a sword, yet you have not returned to me. I overthrew some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, yet you have not returned to me. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel. And because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who treads the high places of the earth. The Lord God of hosts is his name. Thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live, you who turn justice to wormwood and lay righteousness to rest in the earth. He calls to the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken. Hate evil, love good, establish justice in the gate. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. Take away from me the noise of your song. For I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book Apollyon by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustine. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.